Well, welcome to the Cinnabar. For those of you who follow the channel, you know that among my other hobbies, right now I'm a full-time student in the uh, gunsmithing program at Lassen College in Susanville. I've been given some updates from time to time and I was just about due for another one. So today we're gonna talk about the, what we've done over the past three weeks um, in our courses. Now, we're at a point now where, where each week we're taking a different subject and, and then moving on to the next and building on, on what we've learned in each, each week and each course. So three weeks ago, we were doing um, hardening and tempering of steels. Very interesting class, a lot of metallurgy involved. And I knew a little bit about it going in um, because I like to watch Forged and Fire and, and I've done a little bit of this stuff before. But So we, we did some, some tempering of steels. We did some um, hardening and quenching of different types of steel and in different types of media, water, oil, air, quenching. Um, we did some Rockwell hardness testing. We even got assigned some mystery metals and had to, uh, to put them through the processes of hardening and decide what kind of metal each of them was. Really pretty fascinating. I brought some examples from, from some of the tempering because they turned out really pretty. Um, the, these, these pieces of steel here, we were tempering to a certain color. Now, if you know about tempering, um, you understand that as we heat metal, there's an oxidation layer forms on it. And depending on how hot we're getting the metal, um, it changes colors through a, through a spectrum of colors. We were searching for this really dark blue color that comes right after kind of a really pretty purple color that I liked, but that wasn't what the uh, end result was supposed to be. Here's a, here's a piece of oil hardening um, rod that we held in this wire here and heated up. We were just using little propane torches like this for the, for the tempering. Um, really beautiful stuff and this this one was a bit of a challenge in that we we had to taper this rod and then keep it a consistent color and temperature all the way down from the thick end to the thinner end and that took a little time and uh, patience to get that done um, so we're really a, a fascinating class now as as we're going through these other courses um, all throughout the term we're doing some some uh, TIG welding for gunsmiths um, gas tungsten arc welding is the official term for it, but we just call it TIG. TIG welding is a, a, a very high temperature and very focused arc um, through a really thin electrode. Most of the time we're a, a sixteenth of an inch electrode and, and sometimes when we're doing really fine stuff it's a forty thousandths electrode that we're dealing with. This is kind of a rite of passage. We've been working on all sorts of different types of joints and uh, last week I got assigned this box to build um, we took some of these these pieces of steel like I was showing you here that we we uh, tempered They're 16th inch thick and, and one by four got, got ten of them We uh, welded a couple of them together on one end a couple of them together for the other end And then we had four of them to make this box out of and then uh, While it was still hot threw it in a tank of water now as it cooled then it creates a, a vacuum a suction and so if there's any flaws in the welds then uh, that water will go through and, and your weld fails or your, your project fails. Fortunately for me, I'm, I'm ready to move on now to some other projects. This, this one worked real good and uh, I'm, I'm happy, to, happy to say that I'm moving on to working on some, some really gunsmith specific stuff. Now one, one of the next projects we'll do is we've got some, uh, some pieces of metal, very thin knife edge, just like a, a sear um, that we'll be welding to build up the top of a sear and you know a sear is just a knife edge little piece and very intricate stuff so fascinating stuff and, and uh, really really kind of excited about the TIG welding courses. So next we're going to move on um, stick around here for a minute I'll give you a close-up of some of these these parts we were just looking at and then we'll talk about the following week which was parkerizing. So here's a close-up of some of these tempered parts that I was showing you earlier really can make some some beautiful colors with this just a a little propane torch the traditional uh, way to fire blue and here's that uh, TIG welded up box I was telling you about earlier it ain't uh, yeah the most pretty welds in the world but uh, they held and I'm kind of proud that they did so two weeks ago our project was parkerizing now I'm sure if you watch this channel you probably know enough about firearms to know what parkerizing is or what the finish looks like. Um, you know it's just kind of this, this real durable grayish type finish that a lot of military firearms 
are, are finished with. Now the beauty of, of parkerizing is that it's, it's very durable and it's real easy to do. So I mean it makes real good sense that the military would use this extensively. You know, I, I, uh, I don't dislike the, the parkerized finish, it isn't really my, my favorite. I, I, you know, I prefer a, a blue or a matte finish. But, uh, but this is a great finish as far as simplicity and durability. And, and cost. I mean, you could set up the parkerize in your own garage relatively easily and cheaply. Um, the prep work is really easy, really nice. You just take the gun apart, put it, take it over to the, the blasting cabinet and sandblast all the parts. There's not a whole lot of polishing and whatnot. In fact, what you don't want is, is polishing. We rough it up a little bit with the sandblasting to, to give it uh, a surface that that parkerizing can, can stick to. Uh, after we blast it, then we we clean it and degrease it really good, and then put it in the parkerizing tank for about five minutes. Pull it out, oil it up real good, and uh, put the gun back together. I mean that's kind of an oversimplification, but it's not much. Uh, it's, a, it's a real simple process that creates a great durable finish on on these old firearms. This old 410 is one we just used around the house to shoot sage rats and. It was getting a little bare metal and whatnot, so it was kind of a great choice, and I don't think I'm going to have to worry about the finish on it for as little use as it gets and just around the house here. Um, you know, it'll probably last my lifetime. So here's a close-up of that old uh, Monkey Wards Western Field, uh, actually I think made by Mossberg, 410 shotgun that we shoot sage rats with. Really turned out nice with this parkerized finish on it. Well, this is last week's Cerakote project. This is my wife's self-defense shotgun. We uh, picked out this, this pretty blue color and, and left the, the buttstock black and the, and the slide black and uh, Cerakoted this blue on it. Really turned out pretty nice. And it occurred to me as I was working on it that uh, the wife must be kind of partial to this color combination. See, she picked out this blue color and it just, uh, just a shade off from the car I was driving when we first met uh, just a few short uh, decades ago. Um, I'm still convinced that she fell in love with the car and I just kind of came along as part of the uh, part of the bargain. Um, but anyway, this uh, this old shotgun come out nice. It, uh, it's kind of an interesting process, this Cerakoting. Um, you know, we just, it's, it's real similar to, to the uh, parkerizing process where we, we take the gun apart, sandblast it, and then the parts that we're going to Cerakote um, clean them up and, and we, we spray on with a with a air gun or air sprayer this the Cerakote finish and then bake it on put it back together and, and it's good to go so uh, turned out real nice and, and now we've got a, a, a real nice uh, colors matching shotgun to, to take a take along with us when we go for a ride gives a new meaning to the term riding shotgun huh <laughs> since we got the car out we're gonna have to take it for a little spin and and uh, we're going to ride shotgun for the first time. Well, until next time, happy trails from the Cinnabar. Ah!